Hello everyone, welcome back for more Let's Play Watergate the Game. So, we've gotten not much progress yet. We figured out that we need to go to Miami to talk to the sheriff, but that's about it. So we went home and walked into a sewer and found Timothy Leary sitting here. Let's talk to him, shall we? After we look around. Yeah, the Berkeley professor notorious for giving LSD to his students. He escaped from prison last year, and Nixon has been trying to arrest him ever since. It's not going to actually let us look around. Nope. So let's talk to him. Excuse me, are you Timothy Leary? The man replies by offering you a capsule of LSD. Here, take this, he says. This pill will help you on your journey. Okay, so let's see what pill he's offering us there. You take the LSD and swallow it. Not just take it, but you take it and wolf it down. And you feel very strange. Honestly, folks, I have, you know, no clue what's really going on around here. Notice I collided with something and didn't die. But I'm Mega Man on a Blackitude cloud here. With no helmet. On Neon Cat's background. I don't know. No, I don't know what's going on here either. Another timer's almost up. And we wake up in a ditch on 15th Street Northwest. You are no longer welcome at the National Air and Space Museum. Ah. Once again, 100% completely historically accurate. I might be lying. So, let's go back home. Oh, come on. Game's picky about that. Pick badge. So we're back here now. And we don't need to go back in the sewer. Even though I will. Because there's nothing there now. We've done the one thing we really needed to do there. Ah, and we walk into our depressing one bedroom apartment. So, let's examine, shall we? A shovel. That seems useful. A flower pot, the XY pot to lighten up the decor that we need to throw out. So that is an ugly pot. Store brand jar of mayonnaise that we used to make macaroni salad recently, and we don't need it for anything. Nothing unusual there. out the window, admiring the view of DuPont Circle. Okay. Can we eat the mayonnaise? Yes, we can. Ah, we just scooped out a jar of a bunch of mayonnaise with our hands and ate it. Ah, we are classy. So, let's see. Nothing on the bookshelf. Fiduciary Counting Statues, Volume 9, The Frigidaire, 68 manual, and many other literary influences. Sounds about right. Now, can I use the curtains at all for anything? What you expected hasn't happened. Ah, been waiting for that phrase to pop up there. So nothing here. But we do have one place we can go. Unfortunately, we couldn't pack like I wanted to. But I really just wanted to, you know, do that LSD trip here. 
So let's go ahead and use the Miami Itinerary. And now we are at the Miami-Dade County Attorney's Office. Not many places we can go here. Interesting. What? That, that doesn't warrant... Yep, Miami-Dade Office of the State Attorney on 12th Avenue. Okay. Okay. You and Bernstein walk into the Dade County District Attorney's Office. Hi, you say. We're from the Washington Post. We'd like to see Mr. Dardis, please. The intern behind the desk looks at you with disdain. Mr. Dardis isn't seeing anyone today. He resumes reading The Fountainhead and cutting his toenails. So let's see if it just lets us move in. You head toward Dardis' office. The intern yells at you from its desk. Hey, you don't have an appointment! He grabs the letter opener and slices your throat open. You collapse on the floor as you bleed out. The last thing you hear is the intern saying, Oh wait, is today Tuesday? And it's a sad thing our career ends here. <sighs> Another death from pointless maneuvering. Just like Shadowgate. And exactly what he would have done in real life. Uh, doors open there. But we can't go in because, you know, we'll get freaking shoved. So, no, nothing unusual. But we can go over here. Into the hallway. Let's see, we've got a vacuum cleaner just sitting there. An old Hoover vacuum, presumably belonging to the building's custodians. And we take said vacuum. There. Door leads you back to the waiting room. We don't want to go there. Restricted to non employees, huh? Door is locked. Well, let's see. We've got something heavy. Let's see if we can break that. No? Aw. We could break with the slightest thumb. Did I, I probably missed something somewhere. I probably missed a hammer somewhere along the line, and I can't remember where. Door's locked. Okay, just one second while I go find this, uh, the hammer I need. Man, I missed something. I knew I was moving too fast. Hang on. Or, no, I'm an idiot. Because I didn't have to have a hammer. I just thought I did. We can punch it. Punch in the lock. And it's now open. Yeah, I forgot the punch command. So I forgot we actually had to use the punch command for this. So let's go in. And run into Mario and Luigi. 100% historically accurate. We walk into the building's basement. You notice that two plumbers are wandering around, looking lost. Hi, how are you, you say to the plumbers. Not so good, says the shorter plumber. My brother and I are looking for a Martin Dardis officer. We are Italian plumbers who are supposed to fix Mr. Dardis' bathroom. It's a me, Mario. The taller brother nods. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it, he says. And, okay, I apologize for that horrible, horrible accent. Ugh, I was trying to do Mario. I really was. Didn't work. I, I apologize out there. I'll stop that. Luckily, we brought in an extra pair of caps, overall, and mustaches. They're in this suitcase beside me, just out of our line of sight. You look at the Italian plumbers. They're the exact same height as you and Bernstein. He turned to Bernstein and whispered, Are you thinking what I'm thinking? He nods. Let's do it. We repeatedly jump on the intern's head, crushing his skull. 
so yeah. That's how that works. Did they leave behind that suitcase? Nope, we took the suitcase. Presumably we are now dressed like them, but I hope all we did was jump on the intern. He deserved it. He was going to cut our throat open. You head into Martin Dardis' office. Mr. Dardis, Bernstein says. We're from the Washington Post. He nods, barely masking his annoyance. I just got these checks from Barker's bank account. He points to a stack of documents on his desk. You're welcome to take a look, but I don't got all day. So let's examine here. It's a Mexican check to Bernard Barker on the middle line that says, for totally legal purposes. Okay. A cashier's check for 25000 They were April 8th, they were April 10th, payable to Kenneth L. Dahlberg. Who's Kenneth Dahlberg, you asked artist? He shrugs. We haven't been able to ascertain that. Strange. Why would Barker have this guy's $25,000 check? You jot down the note, Kenneth Dahlberg. Bernstein nudges you and says, Let's head back to D.C. and give this Dahlberg guy a call. He rolls up some tobacco with a nicotine patch and smokes it. And these others... Totally for legal purposes. Check, okay. Another Mexican check. A chief investigator who is irritated by our presence. Was there anything else in Barker's account? You ask. What you see is what I got, pal, Dardis replies. There's gotta be something in there. Let's make sure to look through everything he's got. And we already did that. His gun carelessly placed on his desk. Can we palm it? And yes, we can. And he doesn't notice it's missing. And just to show you what happens if you do decide to use this gun on people. Yep, same thing. Except, you know, we pull out and fire three shots at a waving a broadsword around. <sighs> we spend the remainder of our life in prison, working on both our glutes and the associate's degree in tourism studies. You were then shipped in the shower. Three credits short from degree. Yes, it's a sad thing our journalism career ends here. And yes, continue. We've taken the gun. We've gotten what we needed here. A new lead. Dahlberg. Notice we didn't go to jail for killing him. That is because he completely deserved it. I say he deserved it, and that's what counts, damn it. And now that we've gotten that, let's go back to her office. And if I'm not mistaken, we will never need to see the chief again. With that, speak Dahlberg. Kenneth Dahlberg, please, you say to the operator. Please hold while I look up the number. After a moment, the operator connects your call. A nervous voice answers. Mr. Dahlberg, this is Bob Woodward of the Washington Post. We're doing a follow-up on the Watergate break-in, and I was curious about your check. My check? The $25,000 one. In Bernard Barker's Florida account. There's a lengthy silence. Dahlberg says, That $25,000 was for the money I collected for Nixon. I was Midnight's finance chairman for the committee. The committee to re-elect the president? Yes, he states. This is difficult for me. I think I'm caught in the middle of something and I don't know what. What do you think it could be? I don't know. You see, I raised that money in cash and I didn't want to carry it around, so I had to exchange as a cashier's check. I see. He pauses. I know I shouldn't be telling you this, but he trails off. I gave that money to Mr. Stance. You nearly shit a brick. I beg your pardon, you say? I gave it to Stance. Maurice Stans, the head of the finance for Nixon? Yes, in Washington. Now what he did with it, I really do not know. Do you think... I'm sorry, that's all I have to say. You hang up the phone. The burglary is now directly linked to the Nick now directly linked to the Nixon campaign. The gravity of this revelation causes your stomach to cramp. Hmm, 
So that's an interesting thing. But we will have to follow that up next time. So, when we return, we follow up on those leads. Take care, folks. See you later.